that regard. Uh, okay, so let's move ahead now. Let's get into the meat of this. This is the beast. This is what you need to master. Um, and uh, this is not easy. So let's take a look. Um, hold on one second, okay. So distance learning, this is our subject. And we've got five spokes on this wheel, learning systems, delivery systems, instructional and curriculum systems, management systems, and security, cybersecurity, and support systems. So we're going to, through the next 30 minutes, we're going to take them one by one, and we're going to go through what do they do, who are the providers of this, what are the key management issues that you need to uh, address. Um, so, you know, just to give a little bit of a preview, you know, learning systems or lear learning management systems, you know, digital um, assistance, uh, professional development programs, the delivery systems or classroom management, virtual classroom. So we're using Zoom here. That's one of these things. Uh, instructional and curricular uh, systems as curricular management, instructional design tools, management systems. This is, um, you know, keeping the school running, uh, keeping track of attendance and grades, um, setting up a system where everybody can communicate with each other, and cybersecurity and hardware, cybersecurity to keep you out of trouble, hardware systems so that everything works, uh, everything works beautifully. So what have people used as they've made the, um, the, the switch um, during uh, the COVID um, uh, epidemic recently, you know, the recent switch to, uh, to online classes is the most common tools were operational. And this kind of makes sense. So, you know, 50% were using these kind of operational tools. So this is sort of along the idea of we're going to just take our class and move it online. So now instead of meeting in room 204 at nine o'clock, we're going to meet in a Zoom um, meeting um, at, uh, at that time. And um, so there was more focus on that than there was on, on the curriculum, developing new curriculum, changing the curriculum, adapting the curriculum. And it, it makes sense, right? This was, I'm sure this, uh, you know, for you too, this was the system you had to just get it working in some regard. But I think as the system develops, as, as, as we spend more time online, the effort is gonna, the, 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 techno, the technology system is going to get less focus and the curriculum and uh, learning tools are going to get more uh, focus. So let's take a look. Learning management systems is the first module. Um, it's for both students and teachers and it creates a central hub where educators can upload, organize a course, material for student access, um, usually does not include the content um, and um, you know it ha provides you with the ability to integrate content creation platforms it generates reports on participation grades quizzes course activities etc and here are some of the big providers of this so Google classroom uh, at least what I've seen uh, maybe some of you can comment on this if you're currently using Google Classroom. Google has made this free um, and they have a very particular strategy in mind. This is they want to get you and the students and everybody and for the whole world for that matter into their ecosystem and this is a tool to do that. So it integrates Google Documents, it integrates Gmail, it integrates, you know, I don't know, everything else that Google does, YouTube obviously. And so this is a strategy that technology companies have used for decades, starting with IBM. So IBM gave uh, mainframe computers 
to universities when they got going with that product in the 1960s and 70s. And the idea was they want students and teachers to learn on their platform so that when they left school, they would go out and they would buy IBM computers for businesses and government, wherever they were working. Apple did the same thing with giving, giving schools, um, pro, giving schools um, their uh, uh, Mac, um, and earlier than Mac, whatever, Apple or something or other. And so, you know, Google is just taking a, a page out of their book and doing something similar. You know, it's a good program. There's no, you know, no way around it. Um, I've used Blackboard and Canvas, uh, very similar. Um, Blackboard, um, I find sort of, um, I don't know, overly confusing. I mean, it has every functionality, but it's, um, you know, a little bit confusing. It's not free. It's not cheap. Um, they've just come out with a new version, 9.1. Um, is much more like Canvas, which is a cleaner uh, version of it. So these are, you know, Moodle is a, is a Google product as, uh, as well. And, um, but Google Classroom, a school can get an account and then it sort of integrates with the whole school. That's what they're looking to do, you know, to, to get everybody. Okay, so digital learning uh, programs, um, so these deliver content online, they're interactive, they have a large range of learning resources, um, they integrate with the learning management system and the curriculum management system to supplement students' needs, they track progress, um, and, uh, and, you know, these are also, some of these names will be familiar to you, and, um, so they're basically focused on the content that's going in the system. Okay. Um, let me stop here to take a look at the chat, see if anyone's had any questions, comments. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so let's see, Julie says, she, yeah, she's a, a G Suite school. So they use Google Classroom for everything. So that's great. We'll call, you know, we'll, um, you know, look for you and others to tell us how that experience has, uh, has been. Um, okay, so next, uh, let me just go back. Where are we on our clock here? So, you know, we started here, we talk about delivery systems. Now we're getting into this area, curricular, curriculum management, digital learning um, uh, programs uh digital learning program so this is for teachers and students and what does it do it makes virtual lessons engaging it's adaptive it assesses students performance it tracks progress online um, they integrate with lsm and curriculum management systems and here are oops i did this already i'm sorry i'm, I'm uh, one slide behind okay sorry digital assessment solutions serves me right for rolling back the slides uh, digital assessment solutions this is for uh, school um, leaders for um, for uh, district superintendents for teachers for parents so basically for everybody it creates customized tests incorporating a variety of questions it administers the test that provides security systems for this for these tests such as rotating the way the questions are providing a a rigid clock to answer the questions uh, minimize the um, ability for um, students to uh, to get outside <laughs> help while they're doing uh, a test and uh, who are some of the companies that do this you know renaissance uh, study island edulastic lumos you know, iReady, which is a, a big one. So online programs for teacher training, as we move along, online training for teachers. So obviously we wanna expand teachers' skill sets. We can't bring all the teachers together in a class for an hour a day of training in a computer room. Um, so we need to use online tools 
uh, for this. And so we want to expand their skills. Uh, we need to do this constantly, absolutely constantly. Um, it boosts their productivity and performance. The more they know, the more adept they are, the more this gets wired into their thinking and the more it gets wired into their, into their hands so that they do this all automatically without, um, without thinking about it. And these online programs can be done anywhere, right? They can be, you know, done while you're riding the bus. So here are a few of them. Um, Coursera, which I mentioned uh, before, you know, has a bunch of them. Um, uh, Otis for Educators, Simple K-12. There's a, a bunch of these. Um, and uh, you as, as a leader need to have an opinion about which one you think is best for your teachers in the system that you are using. Okay, delivery systems, we're moving along. Virtual classroom tools. So this is like Zoom, live video streaming. This creates as much interaction as possible between the, the teachers uh, and the students and also between the students and each other. So live video, screen sharing, um, rich media interactive presentations. Uh, st students can collaborate online by using, you know, side rooms or other tools. Uh, you can record a session, which then students who couldn't attend class or students who want to review it or parents who want to go back to find out what something meant can access it. Um, and it can also be used for real time. This is an interesting, you know, so these are names you all should know, right? Google Meet, which is, um, you know, their competitor to Zoom, Zoom, which we're using now, Cisco, WebEx, GoToMeeting. Um, I think this is one that is becoming a um, commodity. So in the beginning uh, with Skype, this was novel. Um, the the um, hardware systems didn't handle it very well. Those of you who were early Skype users, users will know it was extremely frustrating to use and the pictures were very fuzzy and you lost connections often. This has all gotten better, partially because of these programs and partially because of the internet backbone has gotten more robust. Um, I think basically we're going to a point where any uh, classroom management software that you use is going to have this already built into it. But in the meantime, you may have to use one of these, one of these systems as a, as a separate, um, you know, separate platform. Um, one of the things we've provided for you is a list of, uh, you know, we call it in the slide collaborative learning tools. You know, this is because we want to sound very uh, professional, but I think really these are like cool learning tools. Um, these are little things, widgets, applets, um, uh, specialized things that really can create personality in an online learning environment. Um, uh, most of them are quite simple. They're not essential. Uh, I think teachers who are more comfortable with technology and who want to put more of their own personality into it will be more likely to use these. This is also a great way for you as a manager to suggest something to a teacher that's simple and easy, and then when they use it to give them praise and reinforcement uh, for, uh, for doing that. Um, okay, okay. Uh, okay, some other, okay, let me move ahead. Okay, instruction and curricular design uh, systems. So uh, these are for teachers and department heads and curriculum um, uh, in, instructors and developers. Um, and you know these handle the development and in implementation. 
So you can map your curriculum, you can create, they provide you with lesson planning templates, they have standard alignment guides, they have a resource library that's part of their system, um, and um, here are um, some of them uh, that you can use. The links uh, to all of these things that we provide here are in the notes on the uh, slides, which you'll you have access to. So if you want to go through and, and, and look at their websites and see some demonstrations, you can just uh, you know, scroll through that, that list. Okay, management systems. Uh, for this is, you know, for basically for running your multiple subsystems um, and uh, for maximizing stakeholder information and making communication as easy as possible. One thing I've seen as a manager is that if you don't communicate with people, they assume the worst. So if they haven't heard from you in a while, they assume things are not going well. And it kind of triggers fear with them, it triggers a lack of confidence. So these communication tools are valuable to you as a manager. Um, as a leader, you want to be on these all the time. You want to be communicating with parents. You want to be co coordinating with teachers, with your management team. Um, so these, um, these systems, you know, create report cards, they manage parent access. Basically, they're communication managers um, in, in a school setting. Here's a bunch of them. I'm sure you've heard of a bunch of these. Um, and this is an essential part of your playbook. Uh, student information systems. So some schools prefer integrating with enhanced student information systems to take advantage of additional features. Uh, but what are they basically doing? Meal plan, probably not relevant if you are moving totally to an online um, uh, online environment, the they attendance management, uh, records, uh, gradebook management. Um, some other systems have gradebooks, you know, built into them as well. Uh, compliance and reporting. Um, maybe we'll talk about more of this in a later class. Um, what I've seen is that during this time, government required compliance and reporting gets more onerous. Um, and at a time when, when you really don't have the time, your own time, to, to work on this, the government is asking for more. And you know, this is sort of um, unfunded government requirements. And uh, so these systems, these student information systems, interface with that. Here are a bunch of them, Gradelink, um, Alma, Infinite Campus. All right. Um, are you regretting having become a uh, uh, education administrator yet? All of this stuff, it's a lot. Um, other communication platforms. This is, you know, automate reminders, set up parent-teacher meetings, allow for reporting of problems, uh, allow for messaging, um, uh, and collaboration um, available to basically everybody in the system, um, uh, generally not for students. And here's a bunch of these. Um, you know, so again, part of your, your toolkit. All right, let's talk about security. Um, security is no joke. So um, the data we had is that a couple of years ago, there were 712 uh, reported cyber attacks on schools in the United States. That number is certainly low. A lot of people don't report them. Um, all kinds of problems from them. Um, data breach, right? You have a responsibility to keep your data confidential. This is uh, FERPA. You, people can use, can ransom your system and your data. And you can see this is not rare. 
um, accidental disclosure, right? Somebody sends the wrong file to the wrong computer and you've got a problem. People phishing um, in your admitted with administrators looking to get to get uh, into into their um, into access to their system through them, um, et cetera. You know other malware. Um, so this is no joke. Um, so let me say this about it: is that if you end up having a cybersecurity problem, this will be laid at your door. Um, so you need to focus on it. This may not be what you um, care much about, uh, but it's important. You need to have a team that handles it. You need to charge them with the mission of keeping current on tools and making sure that, that there's cybersecurity every step of the way. So fundamentally, there are two types of security systems and encryption systems. And this is data that's sitting in a file can be encrypted and data that's moving between systems can be encrypted when it leaves and then de-encrypted when it arrives. Um, and so there are systems for each of these and you need to make sure that all of these are in place. Um, like I say, you've got a major problem. You'll have parents screaming. Um, you'll have students who tell you they can't do any work, they can't get onto their system, and you'll have, um, you know, your, your bosses all over you. So here's a bunch of these that provide uh, cybersecurity solutions. Some of them are built into other systems that you might use, but I would say you need to be at least familiar with what the cybersecurity issues and solutions are, and you need to manage the process on an on, 